Good morning. So uh, on my last session, um, I got a mention of ATSPI DBus messages working. Um, and then in the evening, uh, not recorded, I uh, had a little play to see what the messages formatting is. Um, so I let's have a look. Where are we? Four. Yeah. So we were getting messages coming out with this kind of format when we just uh, printed them. Um, so, for example, on this one here, um, you got all this information. Um, I made a few changes to the code. I'll show you. So here, what we're doing is we're printing out the events actual fields. So we've got a type, flags, headers, body, and then like this serial number. Um, and when we do that, so for the same kind of message, in this case, a window deactivate, uh, we're getting this kind of stuff here. We're getting type signal, uh, flags one, um, and then we're getting this sort of map of headers, which is all, it looks like it's indexed by a number. Um, don't know what the attire is. Um, I wonder what that could be actually. Who knows? Um, some sort of object, I guess. Um, and then we've got like uh, the path um, and the interface. Then we've got uh, the major. Um, is that the major? Or the member? That's the member, isn't it? Um, from, I think. Yeah. Um, some other field, I don't know what that is. Um, and then uh, the actual data stuff, uh, which is what we actually see in the body. So in the body, we're getting a string that you can't see, two ints, um, and a variant, which is that unsaved document bit, and then a map, which in this case looks to be empty, but we don't know. Um, and then obviously the serial number down there. Um, so that's quite handy because that means that um, I can see uh, a little bit clearer what this data is and where it's coming from. So we could basically see that the important stuff, once you know that you're using the correct interface and the member, you know what kind of body you're looking for here. Um, this stuff here. Now in this particular case on a window deactivate I probably don't care about any of that stuff other than the fact that we've got a window deactivate because the whole point of catching that kind of the window has gone away type thing is that we then just stop listening for snippets because yeah um, they, they can't be typing they've lost they've lost access to that window um, and then something else happens and they're typing in another window or whatever. And then we have to catch that with different stuff. So, um, I need to kind of tidy up the code. Um, that, that was kind of experimental. Um, and we've kind of got some stuff kind of working. Um, and now I need to move this. I mean, all of this should not be in, I think we're in Maine, aren't we? Yeah. Are we in main? Yes, I uh, run. Um, so all this needs to come out uh, of there and back into something more usable. Um, and I have a feeling that I might need to clean things up a bit as well. So what we're doing, um, that's actually part of my little experiments last night. I'll just take that out for the moment. We might come back to that. Um, at the moment, I'm doing this thing where I'm creating a new auto expander, um, passing in the config um, and the manager, and then setting up an event listener and stuff like that. Um, I have a feeling that I might need to change that. I think I might need to go back. I had a, 
um, a change of mind at one point, and I was going to hang this stuff off the service. So we have a service here, and um, go to there, um, and that includes, um, where is it? Yeah, so we've got the config and the dbus connection. Now that is for the daemon, it's the service, um, it's what it's providing as functions such as add a snippet and get snippets. Um, and that includes, uh, so if we've got here, so when we do that, say add snippet, um, in that scenario, um, the service, which was created earlier, um, also includes um, lack of the database um, and also the snippets manager and stuff like that. All kind of things that I will need in the auto expander to pass into functions to say, hey, go check whether we've got a snippet which ends with these two characters or whatever. Or this last character um, and then step back and step up. So I think I need uh, to fix this up a little bit. Um, and I think what I need to do is make the service a little bit more of a, um, the thing that we're going to hang a lot of stuff off, um, including our auto expander monitors, listeners and things like that. So um, time to have a little refactor. Um, this will be fun. He says, I've got to think about how I'm going to do this. Okay, well, I think I think maybe the first thing I need to do um, is ensure that the service works as it probably should. So I think I need to do like I did with the auto expander and give it its own close method so that it can do its own cleanup. Um, so we'll take a copy of that. Yeah, I might end up moving this out. Because there's no reason yeah. I'll do it in here for the moment and then I think I might refactor it out a little bit. I think what I could do is rename things a little bit so it's services and things like that. But anyway, uh, right, so what we'll do is we'll add um, 
close method here, which actually takes um, yeah s service oh, lowercase. And then, I wonder if I can, how I can connect, how I can check whether that's even active. I guess just check it's not nil. S dot EU D bus connection right to new D bus con close. Okay, that cleans up one. And we just need to call that. So back up here. Once we've created the new service. Is what package is that? Service. No, it's not. Package main, yeah. Okay. Okay. I really don't care if it does the do or not. <laughs> but we are going to have an error return if we need to. Um, just check that's the same syntax. So close may return an error. Good. Okay. Right. So we now have a close on the service. It's just cleaning up the dbus at the moment. And now, instead of all this stuff in here, I can so I want to open a listener. Okay, so what we'll do, what we're going to do here, um, I think I might move this
into an internal package. Or not, no. I think that's, I don't think I need to do it just yet. I might do that later. I might move. I might even move the service stuff into an Nintendo package later as well. So it's out of the way. Yeah. So for the moment, let's take this. this in here. I might rename that later. And then in here, We're not using that config. No, we're not using the manager either. So. No, maybe I should be a bit more careful here. We do have... a few things going on. We could have multiple listeners. So, all right, I think what I'll do is I will just simplify this. I think that's okay. Yeah. I think we'll do that. We'll do that. So what I'm thinking is what we're going to do is we're going to create a new auto expander, which basically 
just connects up what we need on the DBus interfaces. And then we have a close method here. So we can just do the same as we did before. So if auto expander dot <clears throat> event listener talk to new um actually there's probably a better connected. If it's connected, close it. I have ideas about changing this in a minute, but first of all, let's get the basics done. Uh, so we're going to do an auto expander, which has listener. for events. Okay. And then in main, So in here, I definitely have to move this later. Yeah, we've got event listener, but we actually want here auto expander. Okay. And then 
We'll do serve or to expander. So now uh, we are going to close out, otherwise service sort of expander. Yeah, may close. Just to confirm we've got that correct, it's just going to close out if it's connected. Okay. Then we need to start some stuff. So all of that needs to go elsewhere. So we'll take all of this stick it in here and we will wrap it with A auto expander um, I guess we just want it to be an event listener. So start. event listener So we will have, we've got the rules, got the flag. Let me check where it's connected. If a event listener if it's not connected, turn. Now we might need to do an error thing there then. So what I'm probably going to be doing is I'm going to switch, I'm going to probably move this go thing out. So it's calling this as a go. Um, and I don't know. I'm 
I suppose I can just return an error if it's finished. Okay, we've got a bunch of rules, we do the thing, start listening, turn an error if we fail to start. Now that the end. We've got an infant buffer. We're going to start eavesdropping. And then we're going to start blocking on here and just printing out the messages that we get for the moment until we actually start doing things with them. So we need to use this now. Let's put another thing here. Might rename all these things later. Uh, in fact, I probably will, but don't think there's any might about it. So that's that kind of ready to roll, I think. And then back in main. Well, now that I have an auto expander, I should be able to go go nope. service auto expander start listener right so what's the deal with goes then I need to work out. How do you handle an early exit from a go routine? I have no idea. Can I do, right for starts, can I do that? Nope. Okay, right, I need to look up how to work with go routines. New thing to learn. Right, um, Let's 
to make sure that's where it goes. Lang. Go routine. Okay. Exit. Maybe I can't, but anyway, we'll check in a sec. Whoa. So bright. Okay, it, you can't have a return. That's interesting. If I can't do that, then I'll need to do a check. Um, so, because I need to make sure it does the do. So what we'll do is... I need to kind of catch that somehow. What am I doing elsewhere for throwing errors? I don't really have a way, do I? Not until we get here. And it bubbles up. Okay. What well, could do actually? Yeah. 
Yeah, I'll just do a target standard air. If it's really that bad. So I could just do um, do a print line Tower standard air. I do wrong there then. Yeah. I don't care about the error. Oh. Read it properly. I'm going to take out the error because that makes no sense. Here we'll do the same. The reason we couldn't connect, so we bail out. Do the thing. And don't need that. Yeah, what we're going to do so if Yeah, not a dot bent listener connected to us. Actually, no. That's not what we're looking for, is it? Oh dear. Yes, we'll have our bent listener started bill. Yes, I know. If we get this far, 
take it that doesn't have any return. No. If we get this far, we're connected. So event listener started. True. Hmm. Yeah, I think I might be changing these things up later, but for the moment, uh, no matter what. And listener. I'm pretty sure I'm going to rename that later as well. Connected instead. Van listener connected false. Van listener connected turn false. Van listener connected true. Okay, and then in here. Start event listener. Don't know whether this is going to have a race condition on it or not. Presumably not. Hmm. 
we'll see. So in theory, all I've done there is refactor things out a bit. Um, so we now have that the service knows about Auto Expander, as well as the Snippets Manager. Um, and we'll have to see about whether whether that's going to work out or not. Um, I might have to change things up a bit. Um, and then the auto expander just has event listeners. Um, which are connected, hopefully, when we start listening. So we start the event listener there. It's going to do its thing, and at the moment it's just printing out this stuff. This is where it's going to get interesting, because instead of doing that, at some point, I'm going to want to start stopping and starting things. And then other listeners are going to start saying, OK, I need to get a snippet. So I might have to rejig these things. It might be Yeah, it might be that what we do Yeah, it might end up passing in snip the service here again and populate in some fields that we need. Or oh no, I don't need to do that. Each individual listener could accept so, um, like the manager or something like that if it needs it. Yeah, that might be a better way of doing things, keeping it a little bit more separate. Anyway, I need to give that a quick run and see if it still works uh, before I stop uh, for the day. So this could be problematic. Let's see. All right, Bill. But does it run? Nope. Okay, event listener not connected, auto expander could not start. All right, what did I do? Event listener not connected.
see, we're getting connected there. This may be the race condition I was thinking of. When this go routine kicks off, does it have everything in context? I don't know. It might be something I need to look at. Let me see. Does that fix things? Is it a case that we have to actually start calling on the bus object? for it to rec be recognized as connected. Nope. Hmm. Okay. I wonder if I reckon I'm missing some information here about how go routines work. Because I've not used them before. Might have to go read up. But I have a feeling I'm missing some context and stuff there. Auto expander could not start. Oops. Yeah. Failed to start monitoring events. Hmm. If, okay, so we're coming here, we do a new auto expander. Which sets that. We are in theory not closing it out until here, which is after finishing up. So we go to service to expand a start event listening. For some reason, that's not getting that. So hold on. Dbus connection. Create a new one, return it. Hmm, I wonder if 
if I need to be okay let's do this do it early because we've done the connection here so it is connected Here we disconnect. Here we're checking it again on the connected. I'm not going to muck about with it here. Might change this. This is nonsensical now. Okay. Let's see if faking it until we make it works. Oops. Make. Right, okay. So it does. not ready to be tested straight away because it does work I just need to give it a uh, time for the thread to do its own connection okay that's fine. All right. That makes sense. Ish. Um, okay. So yeah, what we'll do here. Yeah, we're going to tell this instance. So this is where it gets tricky. How does it know? Is it shared? Hmm, I wonder if I have to look at this stuff. Um, so what I'm going to do here anyway is event listener connected equals false because it ain't. <laughs> And then what 
Hold on, that's interesting because that passed. Okay, that's curious. Now, maybe, oh, maybe my first fail. Yeah, I don't know why this first one happened. Let's chest. We're gonna have to test that again now. Okay, um, we might have a race condition there. Might randomly pass or fail. Okay, so we've got. Vent listener connected there. If we close out, we make sure it's not. Definitely going to have to change the name of this, but anyway. Um, Okay, I think in theory we should be good there. We should get to the point this starts up, the variable is set, and we go, all right, we're good. And then we go, wait. I wonder when these kick in. Is it in the... Is it in the loop? That would be interesting. Okay. So that worked. Try again. So far, 100%. Okay. works okay good and I need to go that's good um, I need to do obviously a little bit more work on that but it's good that we now have um, a go routine that starts off the event listener um, and then we have the auto expand itself separated somewhat um, but also there's a lot more work to go on there. Another day. Okay, um, thank you very much for watching. Um, and until next time, you take care.